Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on what part of the country you're in. Uh, Chris Yates here, along with the entire GF team, we'd like to welcome you to our, <clears throat> excuse me, our speaker series on protecting and preserving asphalt parking lots. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Accounts for GAF, and I'm going to introduce our speakers and also kick off the webinar. Uh, but before we get started, one quick point I'd like to make that it's very rare over a career that you find a product or a solution that's transformational or could be a game changer. And I've been with GAF for 25 years, and DuraShield, my opinion, is that product. Uh, our commitment in the area of pavement coatings is to utilize our resources as North America's well, now we're world's largest roofing manufacturer to transform how building owners protect and preserve their parking lots. Today, we would all agree this is a really unsophisticated and some would even deem kind of the wild, wild west in terms of you know, what, what happens with parking lots. Uh, it's almost like uh, hasn't anything changed since we were using bag phones or, or flip phones. So you can see where that industry has evolved. And really it's our hope today that you'll see there are options that, you can, that can help you protect and preserve your asphalt parking lots. So with that, I'll introduce our speakers. First up will be Drew Ramsey. He's our strategic account manager for the Southeast based out of Orlando. And Drew, Drew handles all of our product lines for GAF. Next up will be Glenn, uh, Glenn McCready, who's our director of pavement coding programs out of Canada. Uh, Glenn has spent his entire career basically in the uh, asphalt restoration and enhancement industry. And I'm excited for him to share a lot of his insights and his uh, his knowledge with you all today. And then we have two pavement coding specialists, Lee Martucci and Todd Wrights with you that'll also be, be presenting. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Drew. Thank you, Chris. And uh, as Chris said, I, I, I we wanna thank everybody for being here, obviously, and uh, for giving us an hour of screen time and a day that's that's no longer anything but screen time. And uh, so we'll cover a couple of housekeeping items here real quick, and then we'll we'll tell you a little bit about what we're gonna present during this, this uh, webinar. So first off, good and the bad news is there's not gonna be any audio or video from any, any folks attending out there. The good news is we're not gonna see you throw fruit snacks at your kids to get them to leave the room, which is what I have to do during every Zoom call. So, so you, can, you can rest assured we can't see any of that. Um, but what we do really wanna do is encourage a lot of engagement during this. And so we'll try to make it a little more organic, a little more engaging. So one thing you can do is you can use the chat or the Q&A functions and please throw some questions out there. We'll try to stop at points and actually answer them real time. But for anything that's left over, we're going to do some Q&A at the end. So we would really encourage you to get the questions out there so we can cover the content that interests everyone the most. Um, we're going to go through five basic modules today. Glenn's going to lead off with challenges uh, to the current asphalt preservation process technologies that exist, new technologies that we have that we think really are game changers. Um, we're gonna go through understanding kind of the ownership impact of, of using the right solutions or, or lesser solutions and how that affects the total cost and the life cycle cost of a parking lot. We're gonna go over project profiles, which are really interesting because these are projects that have been down in the real world for a very long time, improve the performance of the product, which I think really has a lot of power. Uh, we're gonna go and discuss the things that we as GF, because of our resources and our reach, are able to do beyond just simply providing a product. So, which I think is really a great way to, to build that partnership and provide additional value. And then finally, we're gonna close out by going over the kind of the entire surface coating system that we have and how we can really tackle a lot of different challenges in your outdoor environments and how we can even utilize some of those outdoor environments given the current situation with Corona and everything else to, to really furnish new spaces for people to, to collaborate in, to work in, to eat in, to, to, to play in. So I think it, it really works well given the challenges that we're all facing. Uh, real quick before I kick it over to Glenn, um, we can look at, you know, a couple of these poll questions and it looks like, you know, for most people, uh, preservation and aesthetic appeal is obviously important when you're doing, when you're sealing a parking lot. And then uh, as, as, as we found in previous polls and from doing voice to the customer, people are typically not seal coding every time it needs it because that's just not feasible. So the, these, are, these are interesting facts and, and it plays well with what we've seen previously. We're gonna turn it over to Glenn at this point to, uh, to start the first module on kind of challenges and technology. Thanks, Drew. 
So GAF has a variety of products in its pavement coatings family that do everything from cycle lanes and bus lanes uh, through to pavement preservation and uh, maintenance type applications, cool pavement applications um, for lead projects and that sort of thing as well. Um, architectural applications, uh, uh, everything from school playground areas uh, to to uh, plazas and that sort of thing as well, where there's lots of color and design involved. And as these products have been in the marketplace for more than 20 years now. So we've got a lot of background in the, on, uh, in the pavement coating space, pavement coatings on, on primarily on asphalt, more and more in concrete this time that's going on as well. But we're gonna focus mainly uh, uh, in this presentation on the surface preservation maintenance aspect, but we'll touch on all of these to some degree rather during the, during the presentation. So the first thing we wanna look at a little bit is, is what, what's, uh, what are the issues that cause problems with asphalt pavements in particular? And so looking at some research from this Transportation Research Board circular, which contains a number of academic papers, and some of the key findings from this is that uh, this UV aging, and oxidative aging that happens to pavements starts from the top down. So the UV and the oxidation uh, damages the properties of the asphalt binder that's holding the aggregates together. Mainly it's losing its flexibility and asphalt is a flexible pavement, so it needs to be able to move. When it loses the flexibility, you have a, an, an opportunity for a crack to form. And once that crack forms, then the degradation can start to make its way deeper into the pavement. And so eventually it can migrate all the way down to the base, then you get water into the base and you get your failure. So the key learning here uh, from, a, from a pavement coating perspective is that this damage happens from the top down. So if we can inhibit the damage at the top, then we can extend the life of the pavement. So that learning led to the use of seal coat products. And, and they've traditionally come in two flavors. A, a coal tar emulsion is a, uh, is a traditional one, of course, and you know, with a bunch of issues, especially these days related to uh, health and safety uh, the PAH or polycyclic uh, uh, hydro, um, aromatic, aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, uh, are, have some real significant health and safety issues that are a concern. Um, but there's also uh, other concerns as well around, uh, around odor and those sorts of things. And then the other big grouping is asphalt emulsions. So you have coal tar and you have asphalt emulsions. And what the feedback we've gotten from the marketplace is that the products generally wear too quickly um, they have tracking issues, not just when they're new, but even when they heat up later. And this would be like everything from a shopping cart to, uh, to uh, on your shoes even, from that, from that matter. When they get hot, they soften a little bit and then they can, they can track into the stores and create extra maintenance costs. The other thing we've noted is, is they can polish over time, especially if they haven't had the aggregate introduced properly at the installation stage, but they polish and they get quite smooth and, and this is particularly a health and safety issue when they get wet. So when it rains or irrigation gets on it, uh, they can create a slippery surface. I mentioned the odor as well. It's a, an issue that we, we hear about. Um, and then the other, the other thing is because the wear happens quite quickly in many cases that, that the products don't have a, a satisfactory appearance over the, the maintenance cycle, the between maintenance, uh, maintenance events. And also because they're worn away, they're not providing that protection that we're looking for during the entire period. And that can lead to further damage of the asphalt and, and all, of, all of which leads to a, an excessive total cost of ownership. So we, we saw this where, here, this is an example of, of what often happens. This is relatively quickly, this is after three months or so. And you can see the wear through all the way to the, to the, to the aggregate at this point. You can also see it looks a little glossy. If this got wet, it would be pretty slippery. And so when we, we saw these sorts of things and got this feedback from our customers, we wondered if we could take the, the performance that we got from our uh, other uh, applications, from the technology that we use in the other applications, is there a way we could adapt that to use in this preservation protection uh, application where the seal coat products have been used and come up with a, a, a better form of seal coat? So that led to uh, so uh, some research done with Arizona State University where we, we wanted to take a look at whether Street Bond, so that was the original family, the colored uh, decorative uh, uh, Street Bond or pavement coating, GF pavement coating product line, 
And whether we, that had been in the marketplace for 20 years and we, we, we wanted to take a look at what the results were from uh, projects that had been coded with Street Bond over this time with this technology. So we, we worked with Arizona State University and they were able to look at uh, pavements that came from the same plant 10 years prior and look at the properties of, uh, of pavements that were the, the uh, they were protected by Street Bond or they had Street Bond applied to them and projects where there, there was no street bond applied to it. And they could look at the, the properties of the binders. They recovered the binder and took a look at it. And they were able to uh, determine that there was in fact significant protective value of the street bond technology on uh, the asphalt pavement. So that led to us developing this product, DuraShield. And so DuraShield, so that the technology I should say in here in, in DuraShield is significantly different than than the technology that's in the other products. And it's, uh, uh, it's so at its core, it is a, an acrylic backbone. And John, if you could just flip to the next slide, you can see at its core, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a, an acrylic. Uh, and that's important because acrylics fundamentally are very UV stable. It's important when you're trying to use color in particular, you don't want it to yellow, et cetera. So they're really good from a UV stability perspective. They're not damaged by the UV. They also have very good self-adhesion properties. So if you do have wear and you need to reapply on top, and you want to make sure you're, you're applying from the top without any adhesion issues. So acrylics are very good for that. Um, but the other thing is, it, it's, these are all water-based products. And so we wanted to make sure that, you know, as with many water-based products, like, like uh, uh, things like a sport court coatings or traffic uh, markings, those sorts of things, they're single part acrylics or water-based products they can soften a bit when they get uh, exposed to water, ir either irrigation or from rain. And when they soften, they lose some of their uh, durability. So we worked with Roman Haas at the time, uh, which is now part of Dow Chemical, to develop a resin set where it's actually a two-part. So even though it's a water-based product, it has a part B, which happens to be an epoxy. And so as these cure, they, they cross-link and they take away that water sensitivity, almost complete, huge difference. But they also, it turns out, enhance the dry performance as well. So you get superior dry performance, far superior uh, wet performance, and, and an added bonus you get is exceptional chemical resistance. So resistance to things like oil and gas, or even chemicals like MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, that sort of thing. So really a superior performing water-based product, uh, industry uh, leading for a water-based product, this is really exceptional performance. It also dries hard. So it's not gonna, once it's dry, it's not gonna track anywhere. So uh, once it's dry, it's dry. You're not gonna have it tracking to the store at all. Um, the, the, um, the, the odor is, is much like a house paint. You know, you could even use it indoors. It's like a latex paint kind of a aroma and we recognize it we're often applying this product in, in places where the public is close at hand. So, um, it retains its flexibility, so it, you don't see it causing the asphalt to crack, et cetera, that sort of thing as well. And really a bonus is it can be applied easily using basically standard equipment that seal coat companies have already with processes that are very similar, so we're not having to look at uh, expensive equipment, uh, you know, that sort of disruption. It's just a product that can fit in, and the pace of application is very similar to what you're used to. So that I'm going to turn it over to, to Lee. He's going to take it from here. Okay, hello. Hopefully you all hear me fine. Uh, yes, just wanted to, uh, uh, as Glenn said, this is a two-part modified epoxy acrylic. Uh, on the left there, you see just a repeat of what Glenn had said, the benefits, but what I wanted to talk about is on the right-hand side. Um, so this is not a new product. This is not uh, uh, brand new. The door shield uh, is part of a line of products that's been in the market for over 25 years. Uh, first developed in Canada and has expanded through not only the U.S. but around the world. So the product is widely used in different environments from cold to hot to in between. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is uh, this is manufactured at ISO certified manufacturing facilities and what's important about that is that's a measure of quality but also one of the things uh, with our product it's pre-mixed with the sand in it. Uh, as you know, a lot of uh, seal code situations, it's mixed on the job site. 
um, which uh, you have options uh, and, and, and uh, opportunities to add too much sand, not enough sand, not at all sand. So we take that, eliminate that guesswork out of the picture when we pre-mix um, our part A with the sand. Uh, and that way you have a consistent application all the time with the right non-slip surface. Uh, as far as application, we certify and train our applicators so that they know exactly how to use the product. Uh, we have people that are in the field, both sales and technical, that is supporting our applicators to make sure that it is consistent and make sure that uh, we support them with their needs uh, along the way, whether it be evaluating the substrate or whether making sure that uh, we're able to troubleshoot um, any, any special application needs. Um, and lastly, something that you probably do, are not familiar with with the seal coat industry is the extended warranties. And our warranties, we offer up to five year performance warranties. So unheard of in the industry. And that's how we back our product. So one of the areas I wanted to, to speak to is uh, this product comes in two different colors. We have an asphalt black or medium gray kind of color. And then this, what you see here is a solar gray color. Now, solar gray, why is that important? Um, first of all, if you're looking for lead points, uh, this is designed with a solar reflectance of 0.34 or 34%. To put that in perspective, um, new asphalt or newly coated, uh, seal coated asphalt is typically around a 8%, 0.08 reflectivity. Now, if you look at this picture, you'll see the asphalt uh, that wasn't coated yet, that's aged asphalt. And age, as asphalt ages, it actually gets up to maybe about a 15% reflectivity. It actually improves its solar reflectiveness, which means it's actually a little bit cooler. But then we typically come in and we put black seal coat on and we actually make the surface hotter. Now, two reasons why this is important um, to not make it hotter. One is, is that when you make asphalt hotter, you actually, as Glenn was discussing, you actually increase the heat that's on the surface of that asphalt as it, as it radiates in the sun. So this added heat actually helps deteriorate the asphalt. The second thing is by helping cool that asphalt and cooling that surface, we're combating urban heat island. Now, many of us are in the roofing industry and many of you know that we used to have a lot of black and asphaltic roofs. What does that change to now? A lot of white reflective roofs. So when you look down on a city from above, about 30% of the surface area is pavement. So we, we really uh, clearly understand that the, uh, the opportunity now has moved from the roofing industry and actually into the pavement to help cool and combat urban heat island. So a lot of attention is being paid attention to that. There's many cities now are participating in cooling projects of not just the parking lots, but their streets and using solar reflective coating uh, for their streets. And I think you'll see that expand as time goes on uh, started out in LA and has expanded to Phoenix and Kentucky and, and other parts of the country. Another uh, benefit of a sole reflective uh, uh, coating is actually it's more comfortable for your uh, employees and for your guests. Um, think specifically uh, one application is in, a, in a, a pet hospital or a pet store. When animals are getting out of the car, you'll see people on a hot day carrying their, their pets because it's too hard, hot to walk on. This would help cool the surface in those environments. And the, and the last benefit of solar reflective, it's actually brighter at night, actually requires less street lighting to light up the parking lot. So there's some uh, little uh, additional benefits of having a light surface. So when we look to compare door shield with the seal coat, um, the picture on the right actually uh, shows our asphalt gray surrounded on two sides by seal coat in a test environment. Um, so our, even our um, asphalt black coating is a medium gray, and you'll see it a little bit lighter than the black seal coat that surrounds that picture. But more importantly, looking at the difference between the two, um, there are a couple things that stand out. Uh, Glenn had mentioned the low odor. You don't have that asphalt odor when it's first installed or when it heats up. No odor, low odor. Uh, it dries hard, which means no tracking into your stores or on the shopping carts or into car onto carpet. 
Um, as far as the chemical resistance, our coating has passed the, the uh, MAK scrub, MEK scrub test and is very resistant to chemicals like oils and gases. Um, slip resistant, I mentioned earlier about the sand added or not added with a seal coat. Um, our slip resistance is consistent because it is pre-mixed at the factory and has excellent uh, slip resistance. Next slide, please. So we mentioned tracking. Uh, this is a picture, couple pictures of a, this job is just actually a picture from this week. Um, so here's a seal coat job. And, um, you know, we, we have our sister product, uh, Street Bond, which you can do uh, really nice uh, parking spaces and nice colors. Well, there's nothing worse than having tire tracks and tracking from the seal coat all over it. So you won't have this with door shield. We don't have that tracking. So we, so that's one of the uh, really important benefits that we've got from our, some of our major customers, especially when they start using colors for crosswalks or for curbside pickup, handicap spots, et cetera. Um, on hot days, you don't have that issue, uh, which it can reheat with Silco. So going on, looking at uh, one of the main questions is, so what does this look like in a picture, picture as far as cost and maintenance touches? Our customers have told us that less maintenance touches are better. So what you see in this picture, and this is an illustration of one example, um, the yellow represents maintenance touches. So you'll see on the left with a standard seal coat, you, uh, you apply it and they typically wait a year until you come back, seal coat and do the lines again. Uh, with the door shield example on the right, you do it all at once. You, you ask new asphalt, door shield, lines all at once. We wanna lock in that, those oils and keep that from oxidizing that first year. And so what you see is in this result is that you see uh, half as many maintenance touches, half as many disruptions. And overall in the 15 year period, because you, you will extend the life of that asphalt, you'll see that your cost is actually less than over 15 years. Now, if I expanded this out to 20 years, uh, this model would show that we then do a mill and pave with, with the door shield situation. However, you've got a brand new 20 year cycle with the door shield model. And on the left, you're already one third the way through your mill and pay that you had at the 15 year point. So just to sum up, a um, couple key benefits. Uh, it's gonna be longer lasting, less maintenance touches. You got a consistent mix with the sand, so you have excellent skid resistance that eliminates guesswork. No tracking, no odor. It's not shiny like Glenn had pointed out. It doesn't polish. So you have a nice consistent matted shine or matted uh, surface. And the solar gray, which I think you'll see more and more popular, is to help cool the pavement and it can get you lead credits as well. So at this point, we'll turn it over to Todd. Thank you. All right. Uh, I'm just going to show you here, there's uh, probably about three or four more slides. I was going to show you some examples of of uh, some dirt shield installs that have been done actually over the last six, seven years. Um, this particular one uh, is, is in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, this customer actually likes to uh, kind of change the layout of their parking lot. They want to change the lines. Um, it, it was set up as an angle pull-in uh, instead of a perpendicular uh, with the drive lanes. So what, what typically is done is they, they either have to mill or grind the existing lines off, um, a black patch is put in place, and then the coating installed on top. With, with the millage of Durashield being the way it is, we were actually able to go in and, and cover up their existing lines um, and just kind of coat the parking lot and come back and relay it out. So it, it ended up saving them a little bit of money in the long run um, it, it, as far as their initial install cost. Um, another great example of this, um, we, were, we were able to open this parking lot up. Uh, now, the, the, the temperatures were, were in, a, in a great place for us. Everything lined up right, stars and planets. We opened this parking lot up about six hours after uh, they had finished installing and striping the lot out. And it, it held up really, really well. It's kind of a, just a little test to see how well it would hang, hold up. 
Um, so it, it, we, we want to get you back on the lot and get back to use quickly. Um, and with uh, what I see here in the Southeast and even moving over to the Midwest, we get back on it in, in a, you know, a good 24 to, to 36 hour period. Most of the time we're seeing it within 24 hours. Um, now here's an example of a, a six year old parking lot was done with DuraShield. Uh, if you, you look closely at it, you can see where the rock or the aggregate in the asphalt is starting to show back through just from where. Um, but all in all, the product itself is, has held its integrity. It's stayed intact. It's, it's been through a couple of different seasons. Um, and and um, in, in a lot of cases, with, without a ton of heavy uh, uh, traffic use, you're going to be able to let this thing stretch out. Going back to, to Lee's timeline, where we want to – we want to get on it maybe every five years and just try to extend out, keep you from having to mill and repave. Uh, this is a really good example of, of how we were able to help out with that. Um, if we can move on to the next one here real quick. Okay, here's another example. This, this parking lot was actually, I would say kind of borderline um, needing some, some structural repair. Uh, the, they chose to go ahead and, and coat the lot anyway. Um, we came back three years later, and you can see here in the, the middle picture, um, it, it's still holding up really well. Um, the, the, the good thing about this, the, the majority of this parking lot, I would say the, you know, the back probably 30%, when they go to recoat, they're probably not even going to have to touch the back part of the parking lot. Uh, if anything, they'll do just a very light kiss coat to make everything blend in and, and match. Uh, but what we see is a lot of the you know, the, the drive lanes and the, the lane running in front of the store is really the, the spots that we'll have to pay or the installer will have to pay a little bit more attention to. But after three years at a pretty busy retail outlet, I'd say this one's holding up very well. Uh, next slide. Okay. Um, the Villages has kind of been a, a big project for me that I've been working on here the last two years. Uh, they traditionally, they hate seal coat. Uh, and they want to mill and repave every two to three years because they like to keep the asphalt black. Uh, they spend a tremendous amount of money doing this. Uh, so we introduced DuraShield to them. Um, this particular lot, they, they went into one of their uh, postal pickups, which most of the traffic here is going to be golf carts and, and smaller vehicles. Uh, but we, we coded this little 8,000 square foot area. Um, the, the first reaction that we got was, wow, it looks like brand new asphalt. Um, just from the texture, having the aggregate already pre-packaged into it, it, it really restored it back to its, its initial uh, asphaltic look. Uh, so from that, we've, we've actually branched out. We've, we've got about two dozen projects on the list now that they're, they're going to start using. And uh, we've introduced the solar gray to them as well. And, and uh, so a lot of their rec complexes, dog parks, uh, veterinarians' offices, uh, even pediatrician offices, they're, they're going to start looking at, at utilizing this in their parking lots to make them just a little more uh, user-friendly uh, and pedestrian-friendly. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a great example of utilizing both of our products. Um, this particular customer was looking for some lead credits. So the, uh, the, the, the SR or solar reflective modified slate was used uh, to cover the percentage of parking lot that they needed for, um, for their lead credits, uh, which depending on your region, it, it could be 50%, could be 75%, uh, which will, will help you out with that. But they, they, they hit the areas uh, that typically don't get a, a ton of wear and tear. Uh, so in, in this case, they chose to do the parking spots. Uh, and then the main drive lanes were done with the, the regular asphalt, um, the asphalt gray. Um, so the, the, they were able to get their, their tax credits for, for using a sustainable reflective product. Um, I think we're on to you now, Drew. Great. Thanks, Todd. And, uh, you know, just, just to close out on what Todd said, I, I think that, uh, a picture paints a thousand words, and uh, if you will, and I think those some of those projects are fantastic. 
there are also a lot of other reference projects. So depending on what locale you're in, we're, we're, we're happy to try to point you in the right direction to some product that's been down for a while. So you can get a real nice evaluation of how the product performs in your individual environments. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about now is how GF really, like I said, we're kind of trying to take the, the, the service and, and that whole, all those aspects that we provide on the roofing side. And we're trying to bring that to this industry. To, to, to parking lots and make them a little more glamorous, show them a little more love. So one of the things that we really believe in is we want to be there before the project starts and we want to be involved after the project ends, right? That, that, that whole life cycle of the project and how we can really do a lot more than just deliver a bunch of 55 gallon drums of product to, to one of your parking lots. So we have a lot of tools that we can access and work with. One of the things we can do is, like I said, we're happy to get out there before the project starts do roof, uh, do assessments of the parking lot. And we, we are in the position to try to build long-term relationships. So Todd actually alluded to it with one of our project profiles. There may be projects that we look at that we legitimately say, we don't feel comfortable proceeding with this project because we don't think that what we're going to offer you is really going to meet your purposes because we'd rather do three more parking lots with you after that than, than sell you a solution that doesn't work for a particular project. But in, in line with that, what we're able to do, and you can see on the left-hand side of this slide, we're actually able to create CSI formatted uh, cut sheets and full specifications so that when you put a project out for bid, you're getting exactly what you asked for, right? What, what we proposed, what you agreed to, what the contractor ends up quoting is all the same thing. Makes bid comparison much easier when you have apples to apples. Everybody's bidding the same application of the same products. In line with that, if you can see, you know, on the, on the right-hand side of the slide, we are able to customize for each project if it's a benefit uh, custom coding plans. So that includes not only trying to address things like areas that are more prone to heavy wear, like drive lanes and things of that nature, which normally everything just gets the exact same process. We're able to customize it. So we actually enhance those areas if that's a desired effect. And we're also able to do things like show customer crosswalks, set up ADA spaces, set up, you know, electrical vehicle charging spaces, all, all drive lanes, uh, you know, pickup lanes, all these wonderful things. And we're actually going to show you some 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 areas where we've done that and obviously anybody who's in retail specifically that's just becoming a much more a much larger part of the equation just trying to deal with parking lots and how we can use those for a lot of other things and so as i said we want to be there at the beginning we also want to be there at the end and lee touched on our warranty a little bit but i think it's it's truly innovative what we're doing with our warranties we are the first to offer a true performance warranty so what that means is if the product experiences excessive wear in the five years after application, we will not only just, because if we dropped off a couple buckets of product to your storefront and left them there, that's not overly helpful. What you need is that product actually put in the parking lot. So that performance warranty says that if you experience excessive wear in that first five years, we're going to actually provide product and the labor or, or a monetary equivalent to actually have those areas fixed. And we're not going to do six square feet. We're actually going to do an entire region of the parking lot. So it blends in well, it addresses the whole area. So this is really pretty game changing versus what you may have ever experienced with a typical bucket warranty, if you will. Um, I, and I want to close out my little section here with a video that just gives you some additional detail. We wanted to have a really amazing soundtrack. We had already blown the budget, so you're just gonna have to listen to me talk over it a little bit. Uh, I also wanted Mike Rowe to narrate it, but I was told that wasn't available either. So what you can see with this, this first part is, and I think this is something important, is we actually provide the product in a lot of different sizes. So we can go all the way from buckets where an in-house maintenance crew could actually make small repairs and, and tweak areas, all the way up to, to drums and totes for large-scale operation. As far as prepping, it's blowing, sweeping, standard stuff, crack fill. This, this is showing the product actually being mixed. So you get that aggregate mixed across the entire thing. And as Lee mentioned, the nice part is, the part B is pre-measured, everything else is in the mix. So it doesn't require the contractors to, to there's, it's impossible to mix off ratio or anything else, which is really nice and gives you that sense that you know the product's being put down correctly. And then this just simply shows very similar to what you, 
probably seen in the past on your properties with somebody doing seal code applications. It's very similar to a seal code application. And then what we actually have is, is back rolling as well. And the, and the really nice part about the back rolling is not only does it really force the product down in, into the aggregate to get better adhesion, but it also leads to a much better aesthetic uh, presentation when they're all done. And then this is just showing a car dealership and some other sites where we've, we've applicated the product. And I think you can see that the end result is, is pretty nice. Um, we're going to finish off with uh, Glenn diving into kind of the, the whole system approach and how we have a family of products and how that can bring a complete solution. Thanks again, Drew. So as I mentioned earlier, GIF pavement coatings includes a wide variety of different products. I'm going to focus on these three. So these three products all use the same technology, that same waterborne epoxy modified acrylic approach. The left-hand side, SB150, that's the one that really got it all going. And that was, that was a, the, again, most, this product is, is a lot, often normally used for, uh, uh, for colorful applications, whether they're for bike lanes or bus lanes or for uh, architectural finishes, that sort of thing. But, but for applications where there's going to be vehicular traffic. And we developed a SB20 version, which is just a little bit detuned, where SB150 was over-featured at uh, more performance than we required. So we, we developed this SB120 version. And then recently, of course, is the DuraShield product. So same uh, fundamental technology, but with just exactly what's required uh, for parking lots so that we could, again, take some cost out that was unnecessary, uh, how we provide it in terms of pre-colored and that, that sort of thing as well. So that's, that's this product, the product family. I wanna to touch now on, on how these products are, can, can, be, can be combined to help you with a, a broader solution. And mostly this is just gonna be through pictures, just to give you some ideas of, of how these products can be combined. So this is a plan view of a store. And as Drew just mentioned, you know, most of it would be covered with, with DuraShield, most of it just from a, a, it provides aesthetics obviously, but also from a preservation and protection uh, an enhancement perspective, but we, by using SB150 or SB120, we can also bring color into the into the story, and that will that would be what we would use for the handicap parking stalls, EV charging stations. But there's more, as they say. We can pull on to the next slide, uh, John. So this is a, a project where there's a combination actually of the solar reflectance for the, the lead project, but also importantly, the terracotta color areas, a couple of things. First of all, there's color, but there's, you can see there's also stamping. So it looks brick-like in those areas and that's for pedestrian channelization. Uh, it's a safety story, of course, you're trying to bring the, the pedestrians to a single point of crossing to provide some additional safety for your, uh, for your customers. And this is another example. This is an aesthetic story. So this is, th these are templates that were made to create that stamp. So this is all asphalt. The entire road is, is asphalt pavement, but they stamped about 50% of the surface and then used a light color um, and just to bring some aesthetic into the, the, into the story as well. And I just will point out here, it's a very light color and you can see there's a little bit of discoloration from and the tires tracking the, the, the dust that collects on the surface from the crumb rubber from the tires and also uh, uh, the brake pad dust, that sort of thing that, that gets on the surface, creates that gray color. So the lighter the color of, that you have in a driving surface, the more likely you are to see some of that, that discoloration. So that's just a purely aesthetic story, but it would be 50%. That would get you lead credits as well. This is an important slide. So Drew mentioned earlier, um, the, the, the issues that the retail climate is facing nowadays. And so we're getting drawn more and more into uh, the right-hand picture is curbside. So this is wayfinding uh, as well as curbside pickup areas. So it doesn't just have to be where the vehicle stops uh, to, to have their, uh, their purchases delivered to them at their car. It can start at the entrance to the parking lot and you can provide even branded uh, wayfinding to direct cars to the pickup location so they don't have to kind of wander around the parking lot trying to figure out where they where they are picking up the left hand side is also though interesting so this is an example of repurposing uh, an asphalt in this case it's actually a street in boston where they're repurposing a portion of the street to allow for outdoor dining because of course in today's covid world they're trying to have as much of that happening outside as possible 
And so the combination of some you know, a nice uh, architectural aesthetic on the surface and some, um, some planters to you bring a ver vertical element to it, and you create a really nice aesthetic uh, a treatment that uh, is very inviting. There's a similar story. This is actually a street in Memphis. Again, a creative kind of a design, use of color on the, uh, on the surface. And again, we see the use of these, these planters that uh, create a vertical element to the design. It's very effective and extremely cost effective. This is a, a, a project in Kirkland, Washington. This is a Google, Google, Google campus there. And this is actually a, a lead project. In this case, the entire parking area is stamped. Uh, but these, the colors that were chosen were lead compliant. So it's a, an aesthetic, but also functional in terms of keeping the pavement cooler as well. Uh, very basic, simple idea of, again, stamping the brick-like appearance in this case, just uh, the, the, the pedestrian channelization, in this case, a pedestrian breezeway. It's all asphalt, but some has been decorated with the stamping. So here's an example of what, of what the architect community really enjoys is they, they get, they can really open their creative toolbox much, much more broadly and create something that really is difficult to create with any other technology. So this is a really uh, cool example of, as well, the use of coatings. And one last one using stencils. So this is a stencil uh, treatment to create, uh, again, a really a unique design aesthetic that's uh, really unique to the use of a performance coating. I mentioned uh, concrete applications as well. So this is a project in, in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Germantown Academy at Pennsylvania. And so they had on the left-hand side, the before picture there, you can see a bunch of spalling. So undoubtedly using salt uh, for um, safety in the, in the wintertime and salt uh, caused the spalling on the surface of the, the concrete. And so we were able to use the Street Bond product to restore that, not just restore it, but protect it going forward as well. And then what works so well is, you know, so these are very polymer rich products. So they have good adhesion to that, that substrate that's there as well, but they're heavily pigmented as well. So we mentioned the aggregate. So there's aggregate there that gives you some texture to hide these uh, imperfections and restore the surface. But it's also this pigment that's in there that, that uh, with a relatively thin application of, of the product, you really can hide those, uh, the, the damage, the physical damage that's down be below. And then a picture on the right hand side, that's a year after the application's gone through a winter by this time. And you can see that it's, uh, it's maintained its, its integrity and looks, uh, looks great a year later. One last concrete picture, so these two uh, different applications, but both were, were concrete uh, sidewalks. The one on the right is, is in, uh, I think it's in Washington, either Washington or Idaho, Washington State or Idaho. Um, and they, they basically created a decorative environment on the existing established concrete uh, sidewalks and again wanting to bring that uh, that outdoor aesthetic um, to the the downtown storefronts and put and uh, uh, restaurants etc along the, along the sidewalk so it's not just providing an aesthetic it's also protecting the concrete from any salt damage etc I'll turn it back over to drew Glenn thank you don't don't go away though because I've got some questions for you. So then I'll, uh, I'll I'll put you on the spot. So if anybody else has any more questions, please please go ahead and toss them in. Um, one thing I want to mention is that as far as follow up and additional resources, we're we're going to do if everybody will hang tight after we get through questions, we're going to throw one more poll up there and just help us figure out how to provide the best follow up for for everyone on the call. But we do have a couple of email addresses up there as well. You're welcome to reach out to any of us or if you're already working with one of our strategic account managers, please reach out to them. And but if you reach out to any of us, we will get you to the right place. Um, I think uh, John actually did post the poll, so you can go ahead and answer that real quick while we compile the last of the, the Q&A questions and we'll kind of go through that. And then if that spurs any other topics, please throw them out there. Um, one other thing while everybody's filling out the poll, which I appreciate, because like I said, that's gonna help us provide you with the best follow-up. Uh, one other thing I did want to mention is, and it's in the, uh, the, the poll that you guys are currently utilizing, but we really want to get this product out in front of everyone. Uh, it, it really, it helps us really make everyone understand how much more substantial this product is than things you've utilized in the past. And it's, it's really the most powerful way that you can show yourself or others in your organization 
how big a game changer this is, how much longer it's going to last, how much resi more resilient it's going to be, how much better of an environment it can create for, for your employees and your customers. So do not hesitate to, to reach out to any of us. We will put product down in your parking lot. We can do parking stalls. We can even do ADA to show you how, how color fast our, our ADA blue is, for instance. You know, And I know ADA spots are often a point of contention as you, you have legal requirements that you have to keep those spaces in a good shape. So why not let us come show you what our product looks like and, and alleviate a headache at the same time. John, if that if the poll is, uh, I'll just let that keep running. But let's go through some uh, some Q and A. So, um, so one of the, one of the questions we had was on the warranty. I'll go ahead and handle that one. Uh, the excessive wear, what that actually means. Somebody wants some specificity. And we're also obviously more than uh, welcome to send you a copy of the warranty for for your review. But what excessive wear actually means is that in a 10 foot by 10 foot area, which in roofing terms we call a square, but we'll just say, you know, this 100 square feet area. If you have more than 75% wear through to the aggregate, we will not only replace that small section, we'll actually replace the entire region. Like we said, we'll recoat the entire region. And that allows it to blend well and, and not stick out like a, a proverbial sore thumb. Um, we have a question, Glenn, I think this is probably a good one for you is because um, Glenn is in Canada. So if anybody knows about Northern climates, it's, it's Glenn. Um, you know, can you just speak a little bit to how it holds up in Northern climates and, and with low temperature and some of the other obviously unique things? Because I thought salt was for French fries, but apparently people pour it on their roads in other areas. So, Sure. Absolutely. Well, I can, it does, it does withstand uh, the range of temperature, no problem. And I, I think we made the point that, uh, that it's been installed around the world. That includes like from Canada, literally to literally Abu Dhabi uh, and uh, do a lot of work in Phoenix as well. So heat is not a problem. You know, cold temperature is not a problem, but what you, I'm sure you're getting at is how does it handle snow and snow plowing and that sort of thing, salt. Salt is absolutely not a problem, not a problem at all. Uh, even the, the pre-treatments, there's no no issue whatsoever uh, with, uh, again, I mentioned the chemical resistance of, of this technology. It's fantastic. So no worries there. Now, the issue is abrasion. Uh, and so if someone's using a snow, you know, a, some sort of snow clearing device uh, without the proper blade on there, and I, I've seen guys use uh, backhoe loaders where they've got the bucket down on the, right on the surface and the front wheel's jacked off and just grinding it across the surface. If you're gonna scratch the asphalt, which you can do that way, you will scratch the coating for sure. But typically if you've got, a, if you've got the right equipment doing it properly, that's not gonna damage the, the, the pavement. You know, listen, the, the worst, uh, it's a, this is a wear surface, the, uh, the, the more abrasive the environment is, um, the, the, either the thicker film of coating you're gonna to need to put down in order to get the life you want, um, or the more frequent the, the um, reapplication is going to need to be. It, but it typically tends to be focused in wheel paths in the turning area. So it's quite localized where, where the wear happens. It's not going to just wash off. So it doesn't break down with the exposure to the sun and the weather and, and then just wash off. It has to be abraded off. So you can really identify where the where area is going to be. And so you can deal with that through a coding design plan. And, uh, and, and then, it, then, then your, uh, your maintenance tends to be focused in those areas later. And you, as, as Todd mentioned, most of the parking lot will end up with a KISS code. Uh, yeah, thank you, Glenn, appreciate that. Um, what I'm wondering about now is I'll throw one to Todd because the man who's probably ruined more pairs of shoes actually putting this product down than the rest of us combined. So, uh, Todd, can you just give us a little bit on uh, A, prep, and B, uh, temperature range for application? Sure. Um, so, I'm, I'm looking at uh, Sheldon's questions here. Uh, it's, as far as site prep goes, uh, most of the time it's, it's just going in with a kind of one of those billy goat blowers and, and getting just any heavy debris off the lot. Uh, if there's a lot of, of oil spots or, um, or, or, or drop spots, um, we're, we're, we're going to ask that those be degrees uh, and rinsed off before any product is applied. Um, application temperature wise, uh, you know, Glenn, Glenn really hit on that. There's such a wide range. Uh, we're going to ask for 55 degrees and rising. Uh, 
Um, and by rising, I mean you could take it up to almost boiling temperature. The hotter it is, the better. Um, the, the faster we can get the, the vapor drive to happen where all the, the, the actual water in the product is, is evaporated out to where the solids are left, um, the faster we can make that happen, the quicker you're back on it. Um, and, and, and the better, it, the, the quicker it cures. Um, and to, to answer your other question of can sand be added to the product, we don't high, we, we really don't recommend it. Um, but if you do need to for maybe some small, very, very small uh, hairline crack filling, um, yes, five, you can add up to five pounds of play sand to each three and a half, uh, almost four gallon kit of, of product in, in that situation. Um, so you, you could add a little bit of additional aggregate to it, but too much and you start throwing the integrity of the product off. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Lee, I don't want you to feel left out, so, so I'll, I'll throw <laughs> one to you. Can, can you talk a little bit about, uh, A, where the product's manufactured, uh, B, uh, availability of the product, and then C, uh, applicators and, and how we kind of are pursuing new applicators in that whole process? Sure. Um, I'll start with D, which is uh, Sheldon's question about shelf life. It's a 24-month shelf life, so, so you got plenty of shelf life. Another question that could come from that is pot life. Pot life is whenever you mix a part A and part B, how long do you have to work with that? Um, this, this is not a, a, a catalyst type thing that cures up real quick in the bucket. We actually, you can mix the product. You have some pails or a drum left over. Uh, 24 hours later, you can still use that as long as it's sealed properly. Um, so it's got, a, it's a uh, hot life is we say 24 hours for that. Um, all right, now I lost track of my other question, but let me okay, see. Okay, let's, where, where, where do we make the product, Lee? So let's, let's go to that one next. Yep, sure. Um, the product, the product is made in two locations right now. We have it on the East coast up in Massachusetts. Um, our, our main facility, uh, is out in Phoenix, Arizona, um, where we manufacture, but we do manufacture in both. And we also have a, a facility in South Carolina where I'm sure we could uh, store some product if needed and probably at some point we'll make it there. But right now the East, and, the East Coast and West Coast uh, being Phoenix and Massachusetts. Yeah, so, so a couple of days to deliver to basically anywhere in the United States has, has been our typical sure. transit time. So, and it's a, it's uh, a stocking yeah. item. Yeah, and now your other question about applicators. Um, so somebody had a question about uh, whether or not you have uh, applicators that know, know how to do this. We have a network of applicators um, across the country that are certified. Uh, in addition to that, um, we, we have the ability to, to train and certify people either in advance or we have done some where we're actually on job starts. Um, so we have that ability. We have some situations where somebody is very comfortable with their applicator and they want to add this to their product mix. We'll go out and work with them and certify them there for you. That's, that's a great point, Lee. I think that we obviously are certainly willing to help. And especially if you manage a lot of geography with applicators in a given area. But if you have an applicator that you're very comfortable with, that has credibility, that's done work with you for a long time, we're, we're more than happy to try to train that that applicator and get them on board, uh, which is, you know, sometimes a better fit for all parties, right? So we're, we're, we're more than willing to educate and train new uh, new installers. Um, I think we have answered most of them. Um, Glenn, here's one. Uh, if the asphalt already shows degradation, will the dirt shield cover the area smoothly? If the sub base on the driveway or roads, how does DuraShield react? That's a tough one. I give you the challenging one. <laughs> the first one, so the first one it's uh, addressed first. Um, we definitely do work where we apply DuraShield on top of pavement that is some years old and has not been, well, may or may not have been, uh, has had uh, some sort of seal coat applied to it. And what we find is that it stabilizes the, the pavement at that stage. Like it's not, uh, it's not going to rejuvenate the, the the asphalt binder. It's sitting on top of the of the surface, 
but it will bind all the fines that are, you know, one of the things you'll find if you're, if you get onto a pavement that's been around for a while, often you'll, you'll feel under your feet the, the, the sand. And that's because it's broken loose from the asphalt binder. And if you put DuraShield on top at that point, you are gonna bind that sand back in place and you're gonna stop further degradation of that at, that at that point. But if there's already a crack there, you're going to need to fill that crack to stop the, uh, to stop the further uh, cracking of the, of the surface. Small cracks, I'm sure that DuraShield is gonna do just fine uh, stopping that, uh, bridging that and preventing the damage from pr pr projecting but, further down. But if it's already cracked through to the base, you're, you're done there. I think that's always the, the kind of the, the, the joke that we, we use when looking at a parking lot evaluating it is some parking lots need a nurse practitioner and that's what we are. Some need a coroner, but, but we'll tell you, you know, which one is which. So this is, this will, this will stop it from getting older. You know, it kind of frees it in place, but it, it, if it's already, you know, long gone, it, it's not going to rejuvenate it from that exactly. uh, in that respect. I think we've got a couple questions on, on pricing, which obviously there's a lot of regionality to that, a lot of things, but I'd like to give you all a, a reasonable ballpark so that you kind of know what to expect. With the DuraShield product specifically on a, a reasonable sized parking lot, um, you're looking at probably, we say about 2X what you pay for, for seal coat. So that puts you probably in the low 30 cent range. And that's product and installation that's that's total cost is in that low 30 cent range per square foot so hopefully that that kind of gives you some idea but like i said um you know larger parking lots th there's there's more flexibility there on both the application side and the product side but just to give you a rough estimate you're looking at that that low 30 cent range um uh somebody asked about concrete which i think we talked about a little bit DuraShield would not be the optimal product for concrete, but the, the SB150 and SB120 that we showed you, depending on whether it's a pedestrian or vehicular application, that would be the, the optimal product. So within that family, certainly we can, we can, we can coat concrete and we do it quite frequently and it turns out exceptionally well. Did, um, I think we have, I think that's pretty much it. If anybody else has anything else they want to throw in there, like I said, please engage with us. Please reach out. Let's let's do some demos. We'll send you product information. We're happy to get out there in a socially distanced manner and uh, assist you as the client. Um, I have. Uh... Okay, perfect. I, I think somebody just made a comment that we addressed a little bit earlier is, if you have small projects and you have an in-house maintenance crew, this is actually a prod product that comes all the way down, a scale down as far as five gallon buckets. So, you know, five gallon bucket, relatively small texture sprayer, you, you could actually do some internal work yourself. And, and in some cases they've done it. We've, we've had water parks that have done things like that on splash pad areas. And, and it, it can absolutely turn out well and we can scale the product down to that level. So. All right, we want to thank everybody again for joining us. It's like I said, I know everybody stares at a screen long enough each day. So we really do mean that and we really look forward to engaging and uh, getting some product down on some of your properties.